Right. Hi guys, Bill Yaley, Mad Scientist Lab. Okay, let me give you a little background here. Now, uh, I always introduce this as the Mad Scientist Lab, and I've been doing a lot of stuff with electronics and such, but my background is not in electronics. I'm not an electrical engineer. Uh, I'm a physicist, and physicists are great at blowing stuff up. So, uh, whereas an engineer learns how to build things according to a set of rules and learns how to build them better, more efficiently, or to fit within certain specifications or parameters, which is great, um, I'm a little bit more fast and loose and I'll get the gist of something tried out if it works great and I can hand it off to an engineer and they can turn it into a product. Uh, but I don't know. I, I I'm I'm definitely a physicist because I don't mind blowing stuff up. In my quest to build a tube amp, in particular, to build a copy of an old 1950s uh, tube amp, I'm looking at it over there off screen, and it's it's been great. It's a great little blues amp, but if it breaks, you know I'm out of an amp. So I've always tried to to make a copy of it. Uh, I've relied a great bit on Dave Hunter's book here, The Guitar Amp Handbook. I started going through here, making notes on all these different makes and models, and you know, pretty much you name it, it was in here, and I started noticing that I kept drawing the same circuit over and over again. All the values were a little bit different. I thought building a tube amp can't be this simple. But then, what I wanted to do, you know, for every for every tube amp that I've taken a look at, things seem to start falling into certain categories. You'd have uh, the input, you'd have a first gain stage, which would be half of that triode, usually a 12AX7. Um, you would take that through a tone block section, which, depending on the amp, you know, you might have a one tone knob, you might have a two bass and treble, you might have the classic three tone stacks, and after that you would go into the other half of the of the triode and to the power amp section. I may be talking Greek, okay, which is fine, because I wanted to focus on just two of those sections. I wanted to focus on that first gain stage, so guitar comes in, first gain stage. I'm not going to worry about the tone block right now. And then I'm going to focus on that second part of the gain stage. So everything involving that 12AX7, going through all my notes, digging up schematics on the internet. Uh, I went through all the different um, schematics and came up with this simple topology for the first gain stage there on the left and then basically just stepped through all the different schematics and uh, started to just write down what what the uh, the values were for each component if they weren't there um, just omitted those and going through all the different fenders uh, a bunch of different marshals a uh, pretty good representation of the Dumble amplifiers and a couple of other other popular ones like the Soldano, Gibson, um, Epiphone, Silvertone, and a couple of other ones in there that are a little bit more obscure. And the second gain stage there on the right uh, just went through and uh, wrote down the values for each component and you know removed them from the circuit where where they weren't used and ultimately what I did was I figured okay instead of having these fixed values uh, is there a way I could come up with a circuit where I could approximate every single one of those things using a set of potentiometers and for the capacitors, basically just with a handful of uh, some pretty standard values, figured out a way just to put them in with a set of switches. So that's the schematic 
that I'm going to go with and build up this 12AX7 test harness. We'll see how it goes. Right. This has probably been the single most frustrating video I've made thus far. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Um, basically, my hardware is falling behind the times. But, uh, so anyway, I'm dressed in a different t-shirt this time than what you saw at the beginning of the video, and that's because it's about two weeks later. Uh, from when I started this whole thing. Uh, but I did want to show you this. This is the the 7, even though it's on a dip switch of uh, 8 values, the 8th one isn't used. So it's only 7 different values. And uh, again, these can all be used in parallel, so it can go anywhere from 0 0.2, uh, 100, 220. It spans a pretty good range. And it hit, surprisingly enough, it hits about every single value in the amps that I've seen. I'm going to end it here for the first part of this segment, and we will come back next time, and we will take a whole bunch of these linear potentiometers and use them to make a test harness for a single 12AX7 triode. All right, so hopefully this next part won't take me forever and it won't take me two weeks of having to wrestle with the camera to get it done. All right, right. see y'all next time.